or if you are trying in a court of law, you, the idea of duress, the example I gave, lots of other things. The, all these are ways of recognizing where people are coming from and accommodating their cultural requirements within certain limits. Now, would one want to reject all this? My own feeling is generally that those who say multiculture means dead uh, are simply saying the word multiculturalism is boo, we are not going to use it, but if you look at the content of what they are recommending, by and large, they would end up recommending the same set of policies as the multiculturalist. On the second question, uh, which is about uh, my colleagues in the other place, as Bob and I would say, <laughs> uh, uh, and some of us, of course, yes, now I think, uh, how many are there in the House of Lords with the new appointments, we are 43. 43, 10 are Muslims. Now, your question is whether it's in the House of Commons or in the House of Lords, uh, are we making any difference? Is that the question? Because there's a many sides. Are we making any difference to the condition of black and brown people? Well, it's not for me to say uh, whether or not we are successfully making a difference, but I would say two things. I think, as I, and I was partly anticipating the question and answering, answering it by saying, minority presence is not important in itself. It is important for two reasons. A, it makes it easier for minority communities to identify with public institutions. It has a symbolic value. And it also makes it possible for those public institutions to hear a diverse range of voices and views. Now, if you recognize both, then I think by the very fact of being there, and very fact of the process that was adopted in order to get them there, they have made uh, is an important contribution. Now, if then you say, but have they really been pushing for black causes? My uh, response to that would be, some have, some haven't. But they are not there simply to push black causes. And I think to suggest that simply because I happen to be an Indian, I should only speak on Indian voices or happen to be an Asian, and therefore I should only speak about Asian, boy, Asian issues, would be to uh, impose upon me a role which I may not wish to take. And on the third question was local and civic identity. I mean, that's a complex question. And what I'm suggesting is this. You see, when we talk about, I am British, what is the logic of that statement? At one level, I am saying, I belong to this country, I live here, and you know, I owe allegiance to Britain and its authority. Fine. But at the same time, Britain is not a homogeneous space. There is a particular spot within Britain, which I occupy, and from the prism of which I look at Britain. In my case, I live in Hull. There are other people who live in other areas. They were born there, they were raised there. And therefore, they relate to Britain through the medium of their locality, the city in which they live. And what I am suggesting is that when we talk about national identity, we shouldn't simply think of making an unmediated leap from who I am to the country. That is also this mediating factor of local identity. And that local identity should be nurtured because it's the default position. And that's very important. I don't think we fully appreciate what consequence it has. It is perfectly possible for someone to say, look, Britain is involved in disastrous foreign policy. I don't like it, whatever, whatever, whatever. But at the same time, one would say, but there is a spot within Britain where I belong, which matters to me, which is my home, which is where my parents live, my children are going to live and I am attached to it. Therefore, I would not want any kind of harm to be done to Britain. Not because I care for Britain per se, but because I care for this spot. And this came out very strongly when many young Germans were interviewed in Frankfurt. They said, you know, the Germans have treated us very badly, we are alienated from German society, they call us you know, plastic Germans or whatever. But Frankfurt? Oh, that's my home. I can't imagine myself living outside. <coughs> now, how you can make that conceptual dislocation is important. And we need to recognize that. 
That's the point I'm making. That recognize civic identity, if not as a building block of national identity, at least recognize it as a default position which can help a country in relation to people who feel alienated from the country at large. Okay. Thanks, Mickey. There's some, just some questions from, from this floor now. There's a question at the, at the back there, and then we'll and if we take the next question over here. My name is Cathy Baldwin. I'm a social anthropologist from the University of Oxford, and I've got two brief questions. Um, the first one is that you mentioned that common, um, commonalities in public and political spheres in Britain should be defined not by common values, but by common interests and common fate. I wondered who should be defining what those comprised of. It seems to me there's a power issue. And my second question was, uh, I've just completed two years of research in Swindon looking at um, people from the English second generation Polish and second generation Indian Sikh communities uh, and the way that they feel about notions of identity, community and belonging at all levels. Um, and you mentioned that in um, places like London, Bradford and Manchester, which are known for having um, a large visible ethnic minority population that um, ethnic minority members had a strong sense of local identity. My findings in Swindon were the complete opposite. It's um, a regional town with a much smaller visible and non-visible ethnic minority population makeup. Um, the, the British Sikhs that I worked with, for them, um, the strongest um, articulation of identity was either British Asian, British Sikh or Indian. So that's an identity with a national and ethnic component. And amongst second generation Polish people, uh, their strongest sense of identity was Polish. Um, English people, Poles and Sikhs, all acknowledged that there was a, a Swindonian identity um, widely talked about in the town, but my Polish and Sikh informants weren't remotely interested in it and didn't relate to it at all. Um, so their identity articulations were much more at the national level. I wondered how that tied in with your finding. There's a question just here in the back. I lost the second question that she was asking. Namaste Bikuji. Thank you for a wonderful talk. It's Itesh Sachter from SOAS. I just have a question about British identities. If British identity is multi-ethnic or multicultural, what about English, Scottish, Northern Irish, Welsh? And related to the previous question, if British identity seems to be multicultural in the urban centers, what about rural British identity? Is there another question down there? Just one again at, at the back. I'm trying to remember what my question was now. There was like a few things I wanted to say. Um, I was just interested, you talked about uh, balance. Uh, I was interested in what you thought some of the processes were that you've noted that create that balance and what is the nature of the dialogue that you mentioned as well? What do you see that as the conditions for dialogue to possibly create that? Thank you. Was it just another question here? Thank you. Kelly Clark from UCL. I wondered if you could uh, describe the role that you envisage for the national cr school curriculum and the school environment in the promotion but also the protection of multiculturalism. And the school curriculum? Yeah, school Absolutely. curriculum and the school environment for multiculturalism. Let's take a couple more. Just, uh, we'll take maybe one more round. So, do you want to? Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you want to answer those? Oh, you want me to answer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you answer those, then we'll, we'll take one more round. And, and, and right, I'll be very brief, uh, simply because I would love to hear some more comments and questions. Common values, common interest. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it is that the questioner had in mind. Uh, my, sorry, but how successful? Okay, we'll see if we can uh, just move the mic forward. That might be easier. No, I think um, she couldn't hear the question. Right, but the, but the question was, um, was who you, you, you spoke about common, common fate rather than a, a list of common values. Who decides what that common, common fate might be? Now, who defines common values? Is that right, very briefly? Yeah. 